Let's get started on your day one notes over piecewise functions. And today we are dealing with linear and constant piecewise functions. First, let's answer the question, what is a piecewise function? Piecewise functions are combinations or pieces of one or more functions. Different parts in the domain of the function have different rules. Let's first look at the parent absolute value function, which I've shown right here and is graphed below. It's a perfect example and a very simple example of a piecewise function comprised of two linear functions with restricted domains. Here's how we would write our parent absolute value function as a piecewise function. First, we have this fancy curly bracket right here, and we're going to define the line negative x. So I have a slope of negative one, that crosses through the origin, but I'm going to limit my domain for that function to x is less than or equal to zero. So as you can see, this line is only needed for x is less than or equal to zero. Then I can define the other, where I can graph the other part of my absolute value function as x right here. I have a slope of one, and it will cross to the origin, right? Uh, Y-intercept is zero, zero. So it's gonna look like this with the restricted domain to X is greater than zero. Notice, I'm gonna put an open dot right there. If, at, if zero is included in this function or this piece of the function, it cannot be included in this piece of the function. So let's move on to evaluating piecewise functions. To evaluate a piecewise function, you're gonna do everything that you normally would when you evaluate a function, right? You're going to substitute the value for x into the function, but what you have to make sure you do is you substitute the value into the correct piece of the function. So let's look at this first example, f of x equals, and then I have two pieces of a piecewise function. I have this linear function right here, for all of x, such as x is less than zero. And then I have, let's change colors here. I have this piece of the function, three x minus two, and it's limited to x is greater than or equal to zero. So what we're gonna do is evaluate the piecewise function for each of the values below. I have four examples here. Number one, f of negative four. I'm gonna plug in negative four for x, but the question is, and let me zoom in here, the question is, which piece do I plug it into? Well, x or negative four, which domain is this a part of? Is it a part of the function that I put the orange dot next to or the green dot? The orange dot, right? Negative four is less than zero, therefore I'm gonna plug in negative four into that first function. So that's gonna be negative two x plus four. And I'm color coding this because this is a really good way to um, see that you need to make sure that you plug it into the correct, the correct uh, function, right, with the correct domain. So negative 2x plus 4, and I'm going to plug in negative 4 for x. And then let's solve this. Negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, plus 4, 8 plus 4 is 12. So f of negative 4 equals 12 for this piecewise function. Now let's look at number two, f of zero. This is really important to pay attention to. Zero is a part of which function? This is x's, the top one, the one that I put an orange dot next to is x is less than zero. x is greater than or equal to zero is a part of the green function. Therefore, zero is a part of that bottom green function, right? 3x minus 2. Zero is included in this one, not the top one. So that's the one I'm going to plug it into. 3x minus 2. And I'm going to plug in 0 for x. 3 times 0 minus 2. That gives me 0 minus 2 and then negative 2. So f of 0 is negative 2, which means 0, negative 2, is included in this piece of the function. Zero is not included in this top one. So I might show that as something like this. If we were to plug in zero 
in this function, negative two times zero, zero plus four, zero four is not included in the function, okay? If I plugged it into that top one, there would be the point, but it's not included in that piece of the function. So let's now move on to number three, f of six. Which function, which piece am I gonna plug it into? Am I gonna plug it into the orange dot or the green dot? Because six is greater than or equal to zero, I'm gonna plug it into the green one, which is three x minus two. I'm gonna plug in six for x, so instead of three times x, it's gonna be three times six minus two. Three times six is 18. 18 minus two is 16. F of six equals 16. What about f of negative eight? That's our last one. F of negative eight. Negative eight. Is that less than zero or greater than or equal to zero? Negative eight is less than zero, so I'm gonna plug it into this top function right here, which is negative two x plus four. I'm gonna plug in negative eight for x, so negative two times negative eight plus four. Negative two times negative eight is 16, and 16 plus four is 20. So f of negative eight is 20. And that's how you evaluate piecewise functions. So you just wanna make sure that you're substituting the value into the correct piece of the function. I really like color coding for this concept right here. Now let's move into graphing piecewise functions. So the steps that we're gonna take to graph a piecewise function, first we're gonna use the slope and y-intercept, even though the y-intercept may not be included in the domain. And I'm gonna show you some other ways to do this, but that's a really good way to start. Then check to see if the graph connects. Is it continuous? And I'll talk to you about what this means. So here I have my piecewise function, g of x. I have three different pieces with restricted domains. So let's graph each one. The first one right here, I'm gonna put a purple dot and I'm gonna graph it on this coordinate plane by that purple, in purple, okay? So x is less than negative three. Now here's how you can do this. You can first start with the y-intercept, which is at negative six, and then, you know, your slope is negative one, you can graph it, and then erase everything that's greater than negative three, and go from there. Here's what I like to do. If I were to plug in negative three for x right here, that would be negative instead of x, I'm going to plug in negative three minus six. That becomes three minus six, which is negative three which means negative three, negative three, I'm gonna start there. Negative three, negative three is right here. Why would I have put an open dot right there? Because I do not have a less than or equal to sign. This point is not included in that piece of the function. Then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna graph it by the slope, which is negative one. So up one over one right, this way. So this piece of the function is restricted to the domain, x is less than negative three, which as you can see, this point right here, at negative three, negative three, we've graphed the piece of that function that's less than negative three. Let's move on to the next piece of the function, which is this right here, five. And I'm gonna graph five, which is just a constant, function, right? That's the same as y equals five, which is a horizontal line, right? It's just a horizontal line. X equals five is a vertical line. Y equals five is a horizontal line. We're restricted to the domain. X is everything greater than or equal to negative three and less than four. So if I go to five, one, two, three, four, five, which is right here, my domain is restricted to from negative three, and I'm including negative three all the way to one, two, three, positive four. Open dot right there, it's really exaggerated so you can see that. That's this piece of the function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in negative three right here. Negative three, five is included in this function, right? This one is included in, I'm sorry, this piece of the function is how I should say that. Okay, let's move on to the last little bit, which is one half x plus one, and it's restricted to the domain, x is greater than or equal to four. So one half x plus one. 
one of the things I could do is I could start with my Y intercept and then I could go up one over two, up one over two, up one over two, right? I can do that. Um, and because I'm restricted to the domain X is greater than or equal to four, I know that my line is gonna start right here and go like that, which means these points right here are not included in my function, right? Because I have a restricted domain. You can also do what I started out with, where you can plug in four for x. So one half times four plus one, one half times four is two, two plus one is three. So I could start with the point four, three, over four, up three, that's right there. And I'm including that point, then from there, go up one, over two. So that's one way that you could do that. Or those are two different ways that you can do it. I typically like plugging in the point and then using my slope from there. But if you want to do your y-intercept and your slope, that works perfectly fine too. You just make sure you're using pencil and you can erase. So now let's evaluate this piecewise, piecewise function for g of negative three. We have three different pieces for this function. Where is negative three? Where, which piece is negative three included in? Negative three for the value of x is included in this middle function right here, right? Negative three is included right there. And actually, we've already got that point right there. Negative three, five is my point in this function, which means g of negative three is going to be five, right? That's right here, negative three, five. Let's move on to, I believe this is the last example for today's notes. Oh, nope, it's not the last, it is the last example. Okay, moving on to number six, last example. This one, we're actually given the piecewise function graphed and we're asked to write the equations and their domains for the piecewise function graphed below. So let's write this from left to right. And we'll start with, I'm just going to use different colors here. We'll start with this linear function right here. Okay, so I'm going to write this linear function. It's restricted to the domain of x is less than or equal to negative 2, right? Negative 2, negative 2. So this first function is going to be restricted to x is less than or equal to negative 2. So first, let's talk about what the slope is, what the y-intercept would be. My slope is positive and we're going down one over two, down one over two. So my slope is positive one half times x. What would be my y-intercept? Up one over two. My y-intercept would be negative one if I graphed it, but that y-intercept is not included in the domain, right? So I'm going to erase that off of my graph. So we've got that first piece of this piecewise function written. Let's move on to the next piece. Okay, this next piece, I have a constant function right here. How would I write that constant function? It's y equals one, two, three, four. So the constant function is four and it's limited to the domain of, do you remember doing stuff like this, right? What's that domain? From negative two, to positive two, x is everything in between and we're not including the endpoints. So from negative two to positive two, x is everything in between and we're not including the endpoints. If you need to write this in interval notation, how would you write that? Open parentheses from negative two to positive two. Kind of looks like an ordered pair, but we're not including the endpoints, so it would look just like that. Okay, let's move on to the next piece. And I'm gonna do that so you can see that it's color coded. Moving on to the next piece, I have another constant function right here. How would I write that constant function? Well, it's y equals one, two, three, four, five, six. Y equals six and we're restricted to the domain. Let's write, let's do this right here. What's our domain? It goes from positive two to three, four, five, six, positive two, to six, x is everything in between. We're not including this point right here. We are including that point right there to the left. So I put a line underneath that um, less than sign. So from two to six, x is everything in between. 
we're not including six, we are including two. Okay, all right, let's move on to the last little bit. And this is a linear function. And let's use, let's use red. Here's our linear function right here. here. Here's the piece of the function that we are going to use. So right here, first let's talk about what the domain is. The domain is one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And actually this point right here is six, two, six, two, and X is everything greater than or equal to positive six. And I know it's or equal to because this is a closed dot. We are including that point. Now for this particular one, if I wanted to continue, you know, I know the slope is going to be down one, two, three over one, one, two, three over one. So I have a slope of negative uh, three, right? That's my slope. My slope is negative three. I also have a point on this line, which is six, two. So rather than continuing to draw this on my graph, you know, up three over one, up three over one, rather than continuing to do that, what's another way that I could find the equation for this line when I'm given the slope and a point on the line? I can use point slope form. So let's do that. Y minus the Y value of the point, which is two, equals my slope, which is negative three, times x minus the x value, x minus six. And now let's just simplify this. x minus two equals negative three x, negative three times si negative six is positive 18. And now I'm gonna add two to both sides to get y all by itself, which is negative three x plus 20. And that's point slope form of a linear equation. Great to use to find the equation of the line when I'm given a point and a, the slope, a point on the line and a slope. So y equals negative three x plus 20 is this piece of the function. Now let's evaluate the function. Look at that, g of two, this should say h of two, shouldn't it? This should say right here, h of two. So h of two, which piece of the function is this a part of? h of two is a part of this one right here. It's included right here. In fact, that point is two, six. That's where two is included in the function, where x equals two is included in the function. So h of two is six. And that, conclu that concludes today's notes over piecewise functions, day one, uh, linear and constant piecewise functions. I hope it was helpful.